Greg was telling everybody I had leukemia and like chlamydia. And I was like, my blood. Wait, why chlamydia? Based bro, on what? Extra white blood cells in my urinalysis. But it can also happen for like a, f a million reasons. Is he denying the chlamydia though? I didn't hear him deny. Greg says I have chlamydia based on increased white blood cells in my blood work. Didn't deny it. And so more cock blocking than last time. And so that's perhaps why Togi couldn't get any baddies down in Mexico. And so Togi's on Raw Talk with Bradley Martin yapping about Coach Greg. And so it's an hour and 41 minutes and I'm going to watch this harder than last time. I'm going to go through the video, point out the highlights and let's get right into it. Sam like, or you see somebody like Alex Eubanks, they, their views are down like 90%, 90 plus percent from yeah. their peak. And so he's saying Alex Eubank and Sam Sulik, their viewers are down 90%, that they went viral, but that they're no longer as viral as last time. That you need to mix up your content, that you can't be the exact same person year after year. That's why Coach Craig is always three steps ahead. There are different eras. I used to talk about performance enhancing drugs, did all those videos. I had the cookbook, the recipes, and so on. And now I'm in the Togi's a degenerate gambler era. Coach Greg, all you do is the same videos. The same exact person living rent-free in your head. The Trend Twins, Sam Sulik, Will Tennyson, Jesse James, Togi, Larry Wheels, Brentley G. And the list goes on and on. And sometimes I sound like the parrot from Aladdin, and sometimes I sound like... Batman. And so I do weight loss videos, cardio videos. I do everything. I mix it up. And so who's still relevant even today? I've done it for so many years now. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, I had to just stop making straight fitness videos. Cause you're just like, how many times can I talk about a bench press? Exactly. How many times can I make the same exact videos? Oh, Coach Greg, we like the old Coach Greg. No, you don't. If I was still the old Coach Greg, you wouldn't be watching my videos. It's not even worth it to make fitness content anymore. Yeah, I get it. And I was going to ask you about that. You... You'd never have fitness influencers on this podcast. Togi, I was literally on his podcast just a few months ago, got over 350,000 views. And I still identify as a fitness influencer. Yeah. I can't even monetize my YouTube. It's Why not? Because of the gambling stuff? Most of it gets age restricted and like a lot of copyright stuff. I'm horrible about like background M music. music. And I wonder why he's a degenerate gambler, sniffing creatine, promoting drug use, steroids, and simply not the kind of videos that you want your kids to be exposed to. It used to be Instagram, but then I got my Instagram banned and it, that set me what back band so it? far. I was posting videos of me just taking steroids and working out. I mean, posting videos of you literally taking steroids on camera is probably not going to be good for the algorithm. Nobody ever thought about posting videos of them injecting steroids and then working out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Even Bradley's laughing like, yeah, I wonder why. You can't do that. How is TikTok not banded, but they banned Coach Greg? Did you guys know that? I defended a man's rights to talk and hit on a girl at a gas station, and I got banned 58,000 negative comments. And so Coach Greg, not allowed on TikTok, but yet everyone else can take all my videos, make millions of dollars from using Coach Greg. 10 million views every single day. I, I do. I'm surprised they didn't get you banned on TikTok. Like, how did that? they let that go? And so that's the thing with TikTok. They want the world to crumble. And so it's okay to show people using steroids, dancing around half naked and so on. But when somebody offers educational content that makes you think, let's ban that man. I would probably get like 50 DMs a day and like, thank you for inspiring me to take steroids. No. And like a lot of these kids were like, like children, bro. Like, uh, I'm not gonna lie, there's- Ah, uh, no, even Bradley doesn't like this. But bro, I don't feel like guilty about that at all because if you take steroids because of a video you saw on the internet oh you're, you're dumb an idiot remember he doesn't take any responsibility for that whatsoever i wanted to do one last big blast so i took a gram and a half a test a gram of eq um <laughs> six i use a growth hormone and so bradley's like bro a gram and a half a test a gram of eq orals on top of that growth hormone and everything for really? Why are you doing that? And since then, you're down to just a thousand milligrams? What's wrong with you? And you didn't even work out in the process, lost 20 pounds while blasting hella gear. How is that worth it? I was getting really a, a ton of opportunities in 
the world that I wanted to be in. So I was just like traveling, getting drunk a ton, gambling a ton. So rather than working out and following that fitness pursuit, I got drunk, I traveled the world, did a lot of drugs and I gambled. And this is your role model. Now I'm like kind of trying to come off. So right now, yeah, it's like 900 tests. Um, but I, I got smaller on that cycle. By trying to come off, he means not trying at all. If you were trying to come off, you would come off. There's either you do it or you don't. There's no in between. I'm trying to come off. I'm doing a gram of test a week. You lower the dose to nothing and or you do HRT. But at the yeah. very least, you have to work out like three days a week and eat a lot of food. And so he's saying, look, if you abuse steroids and you want an amazing physique, you gotta work out at least three days a week and eat food. I think most people knew that. You have to kind of be trying a little bit, which I failed to do. So now like I just got gyno now and high blood pressure, <laughs> which sucks. And so because of this, I now have gyno and high blood pressure. That's not all he has. Whoa, why are you taking a gram of test? <laughs> bro, bro, I can't just hop off of a yeah. gram and a half. Bro, I would be depressed right like now. Yes, you can. That's what everybody does. It's how you do it. You cycle on and you cycle off. Wax on, wax off. You can take 250 and be good. Oh, yeah, I feel great at 250. That's <laughs> when I feel best. It's like 200, 250. And so this shows the lack of intelligence. I feel my best at 250. His words, not mine. He feels his bet at 250. But yet he's on a thousand. Like, why do I need to be bigger? Wait, I guess you're 260, right? Well, I'm like 255 right now. <laughs> and so confirmed, Bradley Martin is no longer 260, 255. Why Why did you think you had to take that much? Why the f*** not? Like, if my <laughs> blood work isn't, f like, completely f like... Have I not already gone over his blood work? Do we need to revisit this? That's Isn't that what Greg said recently, right? Yeah, I saw Greg and I have like a back and forth going kind of. I never have reacted to a Greg video, but I was blacked out in Mexico and I reacted to one of his videos. People who have higher IQ levels, they don't react to videos while they're blacked out. And do you really think he's healthy, that he's going to have great blood work while he's blacking out making videos? A lot of people are like, oh, you're going to die by 40. And it's like, that's the bodybuilders that take grams of steroids for years. Last I checked, Togi isn't just abusing steroids. He's also getting drunk, sniffing creatine, and doing hella drugs. Staying up on benders, sometimes three days straight, perhaps even a week. And so Togi, you're gonna be dead by 40. I'm sorry to break it to you, but if you don't make changes now, you ain't gonna live that long. This is my last one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna try it and see how it feels see like yeah. what's gonna happen it's my last one said every creatine addict at three in the morning upon continuing to do that till the next day everyone says it's gonna be my last one my last hurrah togi you're on a grammar test you're not thinking clearly when you actually go off and you lose all of that muscle i repeat all of it you're not gonna feel so good you're gonna then be very much tempted to go back on. You'll no longer be the biggest man in Cabo. I got smaller, I got gyno, I lost a bunch of hair and um, definitely less <laughs> healthy now, like my <laughs> lipids are And so I lost my hair, I got gyno, I lost my muscle, my lipids are Kurt! It's easy to fix, it's easy. I feel like most kids just, they, they see it, they don't get it though. They don't understand all the consequences. Of course they don't. As Mike Isertel said, your brain isn't even finished developing until you're 25. And Mike Isertel, who's now in his 40s, even he can't stop. One guy I used to look at, he said he took SARMs from 16 to like 22, never got his blood work done once, and then he had a heart attack at 21, 22. And so no, it won't happen to me. Bro just described a guy who started at 16 till 22, had a heart attack. You don't get acne, you don't get yeah, like you get all this, you get hair yeah. loss, but like inside your but you don't check. And then that, those are the kids that like actually- You get your blood work done? And so how do we know that Togi hasn't had several mini strokes? In a game of odds, he's likely gonna end up suffering from a mini stroke or perhaps he already has. His blood pressure, it's already poorly managed. He's on blood pressure meds. And from his previous blood work, he has high homocysteine levels. And remember, this makes your blood thicker and increases your likelihood of getting a stroke. And further to that, he was also suffering from polycystemia. 
That's an increased number of red blood cells. And so did he in fact possibly already have microstrokes that he's not aware of? This may in fact explain some of the odd facial expressions he makes in his videos that he may not even be aware of. And so perhaps he doesn't want to live to be 70. But does he want to live to be 40 and perhaps suffer from permanent deficits that would have him acting as if he was worse off than an 80 year old? He could perhaps lose his independence and require year round caregivers to look after him. And so in watching him speak, it appears as though he is unable to approximate his tongue in a typical manner to form consonants but that he has somehow managed to compensate. And so if you watch him speak and specifically focus on his tongue, you'll see what I am suggesting. And so those mini strokes, which I'm suggesting that Togi has are known as silent strokes, also known as loosener infarcts. They're termed silent because they affect the areas of the brain that don't have as much activity as other areas. These deficits, they often go unnoticed until later in your life when you get older. And so Togi, please go to the neurology department, check out and see if you have some form of dysmetria with your tongue movements. Do you get your blood work done? Pretty much every month, actually. Yeah, it's all super frequently. Good. Like, well, right now I'm not that healthy. Says the guy who continues to be on a thousand milligrams of test, sniffing creatine, Xanax, using various drugs, partying all hours of the night, getting drunk. What is the point of getting the blood work done if you don't listen to it and change your habits? Greg was telling everybody I had leukemia and like chlamydia. And I was like, my blood what? work. Wait, why chlamydia? Based bro, on what? Extra white blood cells in my urinalysis. But it can also happen for like a, f a million reasons. Is he denying the chlamydia though? I didn't hear him deny. Greg says I have chlamydia based on increased white blood cells in my blood work didn't deny it. And so more cock blocking than last time. And so that's perhaps why Togi couldn't get any baddies down in Mexico. A lot of Xanax in the last video. Uh, what, because of traveling or just for fun? Just because I was in Mexico and it's like Xanax and Ritalin is like the Mexico experience. Bro, I went to Tomorrowland in Tulum. There was no Xanax, no Ritalin. Bro, those drugs ain't it. I'm going to try and write off my gambling losses as a business expense. I'll talk to my accountant about it. And so I asked my accountants, can Togi write off his gambling? In theory, there's an argument that yes, the losses do generate income. So an argument could be made that it's deductible. However, in an audit, I'm sure it would take some arguing since it's not a black and white thing and I'm sure the government would try to find a way to argue it. But as long as his content is generating more than his losses, then I think he has a leg to stand on. And so Togi, I'm looking out for you. I absolutely think that you could write off your losses and that if the government does in fact try to fight it, you would probably win in court. When I was literally your age, I used to sell steroids. Okay, I didn't know that, bro. I, because yeah. you, well, you seem like such like a mature, like not like necessarily like a square. And so Bradley Martin describes the fact that he used to sell steroids when he's younger. And he's like, bro, you seem like a square. I didn't think you'd do anything like that. Coach Greg did the exact same thing. All of you, I'm sure, are aware of this by now. Well, perhaps not all of you. But just because you used to sell steroids doesn't make you cool and or not a square. Remember, I identify as a circle. The <laughs> dopamine, that shit, and then it like darts out and almost a thousand <laughs> X's and then goes in. No, bro, it's it's the best game that ever. That game is toxic. I, uh, and so what's hilarious is that Bradley Martin had no idea about this guy, that he gambles on Plinko, that he does all these steroids. He's just, for the first time, discovering Togi. In the last video, so in the last three weeks, I've wagered $6 million on Plinko alone. I was running the numbers. Like, I cannot get enough of Plinko. I love that He's bet $6 million on Plinko. He realizes that the odds on online gambling are worse than at a casino, but yet he continues to do so. You cannot beat the odds. That's why they're odds. It doesn't work like that. Lost my life savings, and that was actually pretty recent. Um, but we've since recovered. In Plinko, dude. Plinko, no. you just gotta give it time. If you give it more time, you lose more money. That's how it works. The more you play, the greater the odds you're going to lose. If you only play one round, you might win. Two rounds, you might win them both. But if you're betting $6 million, you're going to lose. What's your biggest gain? In one night, probably 70000 Okay. And so my biggest loss, $250,000. My biggest gain, about 70000 
250,000 down and 70 up, it equals a lot of loss. The amount of hours I've sat, just like my space bar on my computer. It's got is, a little wor worn down a little it's bit. It's worn down from Plinko Balls just <laughs> spamming space bar too much. And so why not just spam the side laterals versus spamming the space bar, stop spending 40 hours straight playing Plinko Balls and do something productive with your life. If you want a difference to be made, you go be the good influence instead of telling me to stop being a bad one. Even yeah, though I don't think I'm a bad influence by any means. How could I possibly be a bad influence? I tell you I get my dream physique in six months from using steroids. I admit to using Xanax and cocaine while gambling, losing my life savings. I promote steroids, drugs, alcohol, staying up on benders, but I'm a great influence. I don't negatively influence people whatsoever. I mean, aside from those 50 kids a day who wrote me in private saying you influenced me to use steroids, but no, I'm a great influence after all. I actually took an IQ test recently and my IQ is, I'm statistically an idiot. Like I have a below average IQ. No kidding. It takes someone like that to think they can actually make money gambling millions of dollars on Plinko Ball. A lot of people see somebody like me, but yet their IQ is higher than mine. So a lot of people credit a lot of things, I think to luck. And I think, a lot, way too much luck. I don't even think luck is real. Says the man who gives away money to improve karma so that he can gamble and win. He believes that if he gives good karma out in the world, that is going to come back and help him win as a gambler. But luck, it isn't real. You you have your mom and you have your dad. Or you you have like a full family. Yeah. What do they think about the gambling? Oh, they hate the gambling. Yeah, I would say after losing his life savings, Perrin's probably not a fan of him gambling. The drug use they don't love. They, well, they hate. They would like me to stop using drugs like as soon as possible. Yeah, we're not really fans of you gambling away your life savings while high on drugs. Mm. We prefer you don't do that. Imagine if his parents watched a Coach Greg video or described the chlamydia, the leukemia, the ischemia, the dysmetria of the tongue. Imagine what his parents would be thinking. It's like in the gym, it's the idea if you're pump, like you get a pump, it feels good. But what if your pump could get a pump? That's what cocaine is for me. I am not a negative influence. If cocaine were a mascot, it would be Togi. It's like I'm not even a human anymore. I'm on another level that nobody could compete with. Like I'll work for three days straight just editing videos. And so Togi, he's essentially a superhero. He's a villain. He goes alongside of Nick Akato Avocado, Mike Isertel, and now Togi. He's got superpowers. He can outwork everyone. He can edit videos, thousands of edits. He can stay up for seven days straight with no sleep while still being slightly below average on an IQ test. Now remember, Mike Isertel said that even while on steroids, it decreases your fluid intelligence. Imagine being on steroids, cocaine, Xanax, alcohol, with little to no sleep, but still performing just slightly below average. And I just stayed up for like a week straight, which is not good for you by any yeah. means. But the fact that I can do that. And so he's bragging about this. I stayed up for a week straight. Use so much cocaine, Xanax. Last I checked, Xanax, it puts you to sleep. But not Togi. It dials him in. Now, he can't dial himself in for 33 hours to stay on a diet, but he can stay up for a week straight editing content harder than last time. I don't believe it. I know that it's not a habit in which... And I, I, I'm... The worst case is I become fully addicted to like hard drugs. And so I'm doing my best not to get addicted to hard drugs. Remember his strategy? He goes from one drug to the next. And so cocaine, you only do it for perhaps two or three weeks. And then you switch over to Xanax, switch over to another drug, another and another. That way you never get addicted. I don't want to alter my reality so at all. Like I want my reality to still be this is what I see, this is what it is, and I'm here, I'm present. Yeah, I don't want to alter my reality. I'll just do Xanax and cocaine, stay up for a week straight, and gamble away all my money. Like in high school, I really did a lot of psychedelics, and it was like really negatively impacting. Like I was starting to go like crazy. And so he started his drug use in grade 10. Remember, he was a promising baseball superstar. He was in the Little League World Series. But since that time, he got into using drugs. The closest I've been to losing my mind is when my hormones are messed up from steroids. Which essentially is always. 
Has he in fact cycled off? He's on a thousand milligrams. And so if you listen to him and read between the lines, he's close to losing his mind. I don't know. The difference between having 300 mm -hmm. nanograms per deciliter and 5,000, like when you're at 5,000, you, nothing can stop you. And do you realize you don't need to take testosterone to be productive and confident? You just have to literally go and do it. It's not that hard. You get up from your seat right now after watching this video and you go do something productive and you believe in yourself. I believe I can go and do something productive. Instead of ordering in pizza and doing a mukbang video right now, I need something healthy. You know what else you could do? You can get my freaking cookbook. Think of how much more productive you could be. The recipes are laid right out in front of you. You just follow the diet from the cookbook and you got it made. Sooner or later, you'll be losing weight, feeling more confident, and you can be more productive than last time without abusing steroids. I attribute all of my success to the law of attraction. I've always just been like, it's like witchcraft or something. And so Togi thought the law of attraction, it was just some form of witchcraft. If you think that you want something to happen, some form of magic takes place, it's witchcraft, and it will happen in your life. He never considered the fact that perhaps if you wished for something to happen, for example, I want to lose weight. I'm confident it's going to happen. It's not a fairy sprinkling in fairy dust and magically you start losing weight. If you believe in yourself and you think, I want to lose weight, subconsciously, perhaps you start walking further. Perhaps you eat a little bit less. Who else Who else are you a really big fan of? Jordan B. Peterson, just because he's the, what he does for my mentality. Yeah. And so he loves Jordan Peterson. And in a previous video, I recommended he reads 12 Rules of Life. I also recommended he starts by reading the book Attached, that he tries to figure himself out. But apparently he doesn't like reading. He doesn't have the time. He'll gamble for 40 hours straight playing Plinko Ball but yet talks about in this video how you all are playing games on the internet, wasting your time, that you should be playing this game, the game of life. Togi, try spending thousands of hours less gambling per year and replace those thousands of hours where you mindlessly press the space bar, lowering your IQ points while doing drugs and perhaps pick up a book. It's as simple as that. Over a year ago, I stopped watching TV. And since that time, I've read a number of books and I'm in fact learning Spanish. I've been slacking, dude. How often, like what, no, when's that, like what's slacking you, bro? Because like I've gone like, like I haven't worked out in like a month, really. Like yesterday was my first day. Like back realistically, yeah, like a month. And so Togi and Bradley Martin, they have something in common. They've been slacking for approximately a month. Both of these guys haven't worked out in about one month. Togi sees Bradley Martin as the old guy. He's 35. I've been training harder than last time since I was 10. I have never since I began competing ever taken more than a week off. I've been in the hospital. I've had pneumonia. I've been injured, broken bones, been through multiple surgeries, never taken a week off. Yet guys like Togi, they need steroids to lock in. But they can't even lock in. A gram of testosterone just to be able to focus? Really? Really? I'm 48 years old on 140 milligrams a week. And compared to Togi, you'd think my blood work was that of Brian Johnson, not the liver king, the other guy. And so Togi, if you need to dial in, try something natural. G, focus. Help you focus harder than last time for all those edits you've been doing. And if you're looking to be healthier than last time, consider taking blood work. It's not going to undo all the damages that you've been doing to yourself, drugs and so on but it's certainly going to help. Please consider your health, your safety, listen to your family, stop gambling, stop the drugs, and be a normal person. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Please like the video if you in fact liked it. Watch one of those two bloops, of course, the cookbooks, the training books, the circle diet book, coaching plans by me and my team, the hard and last time clothing line. If you got no money, get the free diet and training program. And of course, join the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. And until the next one, I am out.